Hello and welcome back to Continental Club where we discuss the hottest topics in European football. On the agenda today we've got Real Madrid, so joining me we've got two Galacticos of the FD office, Patrick Van Straten and Chris Hamill. Let's dive straight in to at Silver Linings question and they have asked, have Real Madrid already solved their problems over the space of just a few months of transfers? But before we get into that, please remember to subscribe to Eurofootball Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss a video. We do sort of in-depth videos like this all the time, so come on board. To clarify, or to go backwards rather, Real Madrid had a shocking 18-19 campaign. Worst Champions League campaign since 2009-10, finished third in La Liga, 19 points behind Barcelona, their biggest ever gap. And Barcelona have now won eight of the last 11 La Liga titles. So there was a hell of a lot to do. But they have responded in spectacular style. Luka Jovic has come in. Eden Hazard, Eder Militao, uh, Ferlan Mendy, of course, Rodrigo as well. So they've really gone about it. And Chris, mm. what do you think all this spending means for their sort of complexion of their squad and what it means for the future as well? Yeah, so we know a lot about the players that have come in, right? Um, but I think the more interesting aspect for me is the players that may be departing that very bloated Real Madrid squad. I was reading a Marker article this morning. At this point, Los Blancos have around 37 first team members. And Zidane is going to have to chop his way through that to generate further funds, maybe to free up uh, a few more uh, wages for impending signings. Um, because the summer's not quite over and we think they need another central midfielder, don't we, the very least. But you look at that squad and there's an awful lot of value to be had. I feel like, you know, it could be an episode of Dickinson's Real Deal, man. Mm. You know, going, <laughs> cutting, around, cutting around car boots, looking for things to sell on at a, <laughs> a, a massive profit. You could effectively have that at Real Madrid this campaign. They've got some, some really good young players. You know, they're still the right side of 25 who just aren't getting the minutes. Danny Chabayos, who was completely outstanding when he arrived uh, from Real Betis. I think it was the 16-17 season, putting up sort of four or five tackles and in interceptions as this forward-thinking, uh, dribbly kind of playmaker. I think he was averaging around 2.7 dribbles that season as well. You've got uh, Marcos Lorente, of course, a defensive midfielder. He, he looked like he was he was going to be a decent player a couple of years ago, went out on loan as well. Um, I think he only made six starts last campaign. Raul de Thomas, who scored 14 La Liga goals for Real Vallecano. There'll be an awful lot of teams, maybe from sort of fifth, sixth onwards in La Liga, and, and probably outside of that in, in other leagues, will be sniffing around him uh, as well. I've actually got a screenshot of oh, most of their it. first team uh, as displayed by Marco. And they've marked down uh, players in red who they think, Could you know, be. according to their inside sources, are getting lost shot. Mm. Uh, okay, so Bale, I mean, we don't know where he's going to go at this yeah. point, do we? He's going to absorb no those way. wages. Absolutely crazy. Kovacic, reports of him returning to Inter Milan. Yeah. Uh, will Chelsea make the signing permanent now that Sarri is going to Juventus, which of course was announced this morning. Uh, any idea where Kovacic is going, lads? Or, or where would you like to see him play even? I think that might be a good formula for well, this I, I don't section. necessarily think he's needed really back at Inter Milan in the same way that, I mean, they've already got Brozovic, but they could bring down the age of the rest of their central midfielders, obviously Nijngolen, Borja Vallejo, all the wrong side Jao of Mario. Jao Mario, exactly. Jao um, Mario's still young. So this, yeah, Jao Mario's reasonably young. So there's space for him in Inter Milan, but I think he, I, I take him back to Chelsea. If they've got the option to sign him and they can't sign him until next summer, yeah. why not have him on your books? Yeah, and for a relatively cheap price. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you play him in his preferred role and play Kante in his preferred role, you're likely to get a better productivity out of both of them. But Kovacic would probably be quite useful for pretty much any team. Like, yeah. I mean, I would probably keep hold of him if I were Real Madrid, unless I'm go planning on going and spending yeah. an absolute fortune in midfield, and which, to be honest, they need to. Especially and maybe with a, sorry. Go on, especially with an ageing Modric. And I know Tony Not Cruz, an ageing Modric, an old Modric. An aged Modric. Yeah. And Tony Cruz, I know he's signed a new deal of late. Uh, not convinced about the length on that contract. I think there's a lot of Real Madrid fans that are sceptical as well about the deal that Florentino Perez has given him. But yeah, that midfield certainly could use a revamp in the same way that they've addressed the, the kind of forward three. Yeah, you just, oh, just finishing off on Kovacic, I think if um, t Spurs for some reason can't get Ndombele or La Celso over the line, then Kovacic yeah, would be, be a good alternative there. But I mean, the, the, cross, the cross deal only extended his, his contract by a year, but I do agree, I would probably not have done it. Like I think that midfield is an area where they really need to get a lot of work done because Modric, 
Modric is still a very good ball progressor, but you can see his dribble success rate dropping, dropping, dropping. And especially you see this against the top teams. Like in La Liga, Kroos, Casemiro and Modric, that's a good enough midfield three job, yeah. to get the job done. Mostly, though they got counter-attacked mm. a lot this season. But outside of it, it's no longer good enough. Like Kroos has never been particularly rangy in midfield. Modric is losing that burst. I mean, he's now 33. Like, to, to me, the obvious signing if I were Real Madrid is Ndombele. I would go straight for Ndombele because Ndombele, you know, last season, three dribbles a game, like very high success rate up, up in the 75-80 uh, range. Um, just a really good passer as well and does a huge amount of defensive work. And they need someone to help them out in the middle of the park because that's where... Now they've done all these other moves. They're pretty solid everywhere. But they've got like four left backs. Mm. And they've got a couple of right backs. Mm. Like, I mean, a good play, there, there, is, there, are pl there are definitely backs. places they can, like you say, yeah. like cutting dead wood. Like they're basically Generate the, income, meaningful income yeah. as well. And we'll move on to them. They're basically like, right. they're the elite version of Everton right now. They've got no midfield and their squad is enormous. Close and they need to try area. and find buyers for some of these players, which is going to be difficult what? in some cases, yeah. so they can fund that Let's, midfield rebound. Chris, who's off? Then. Let's rip through some of those players because we did discuss them on Sunday Vibes. Um, so we don't want to go over well-trodden ground. So Teo Hernandez uh, and, and Reguilón, uh, left back and right back respectively. Uh, or, or the other way around. Um, no, they're both left backs. They're both both left backs. Um, so so Reguilón, I think made 13 starts this campaign and was s sort of blooded into the squad under Lopetegui and, and Solari, largely unfancied by Zinedine Zidane. Apparently, he's fell out with Lucas Zidane, who also might be on his way out. Oh, right. um, so we'll see. You know, we'll keep one eye on that on that situation. Uh, Audrey Zola, you'd imagine that they're going to keep him at right back. Uh, very solid player, and Danny Carver how. His injury woes uh, mean that you need pretty extensive cover in that area, right? I think that's fair in saying. Yeah. I thought he looked pretty good when he started as well. Though Ed Militao also offers cover he's there. Right, right, right. Yeah, and you've got Brahim Diaz, who Marker have marked down as orange, so potential to leave. Although Zidane did come out this morning and say that I want him in my squad. <laughs> but his chances of, of seeing meaningful minutes, first yeah. team minutes, massively decreasing with the arrival of of Hazard and you know with Luka Jovic and where's Karim Benzema going to play as well and are they going to change to a two? Um, probably Rodriguez probably not coming with, back. Yeah, where's probably Isco not with Hazard. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, Isco as well. It's Isco, like his stock has plummeted in the last eighteen months. Do you see any kind of escape route for him? Well, I uh, yeah, as route. you say, I thought he was probably the emerging sort of dominant force in that Spain midfield for the national team. I remember pre-World Cup he was playing so, so well. And then just didn't really work for him under Lopetegui at all. Solari didn't seem to fancy him one bit. And then even under Zidane, I don't think he, st I think he finished three 90 minutes uh, out of about 15 or 16. So really wasn't getting many minutes at the, towards the end of the campaign. Still a fantastic player, but I would, I would probably get rid of him. Um, I think they've got enough alternatives there. I'd probably get rid of him and James Rodriguez, and then yeah. use that money to fund an another midfielder. And it's like, weirdly enough, like, this is, it's, I can't kind of fathom it. They've been linked quite heavily around Madrid with Fabian Ruiz of Napoli mm. as well, the 23 year old who had a kill off first season uh, in Naples, of course. They bought him from Real Betis. He was the Danny Chumbayos replacement mm. uh, where, you know, for Real Batiste when he exited for Real Madrid. So they could theoretically end with, you know, two of the same player, which would indicate that, you know, Chabais maybe doesn't feature very prominently in their plans and his numbers have massively decreased at Real Madrid, as have his minutes though, as have uh, opportunities in his preferred position. I think he's averaging one key pass a game, his dribbles are nowhere near the number uh, they were at Batiste. Um, I think he contributed to, I mean, I might have scored three goals in, in around sort of like 13, 14 starts, which, which isn't bad from that position uh, in midfield, but I just don't see him breaking into the first team and it's such a waste of a really outstanding talent. Uh, they've also just signed Kubo, haven't they? The Japanese wonder kid from FC Tokyo. I know nothing two about two million, this Two million pounds. It's, it's sort of like Martin Odegaard 2.0, it feels like at this okay. point. Um, he's still quite Odegaard as well. I mean, he's, he's 18 years old, this guy. Um, this Kubo, he spent three years in Barcelona's youth system, but they had to send him back to Japan because of... Um, not like tapping up measures, but I think signing foreign players without the necessary say so. Yeah, so they're kind of hoovering up this talent in the 18 to 20 uh, range as well. And of course, Rodrigo arriving from Santos. Uh, the manager, San Paolo, is very familiar with the, with the Spanish league, saying he's not ready for the Spanish league okay. as of yet. He could probably do another loan season in, in Brazil. But yeah, they're kind of trying to get not 
They've said they want to get rid of Odegaard, but he feels like, <laughs> out of those three, I know he's 21, he's, is he 21 or 22? He might, he's got a couple of years on those guys, but he's, he's still 20, the outstanding 21. talent mm. of those youngsters. So even, that, that thinking puzzles me. They're still adding youngsters um, and not trimming that squad. So. Yeah, I think a fire sale is coming and there's a lot and a lot of value to be had. 100%. It's going to be absolutely fascinating. I mean, a couple of months ago, we were talking about how this could be the regeneration of, you know, in Barcelona going on that was, you know, sort of unprecedented. But it's Real Madrid that have made these massive strides this summer. Pat, what do you mean, what do you think, sorry, this means for the complexion of the league next year? Do you think this changes the sort of dynamics? Uh, it should be more competitive, you'd imagine. I mean, Real Madrid, I think that Jovic was the key signing here. I think Jovic is the... Is the the thing that will solve a lot of their problems. Like they just didn't have enough shots. They didn't have enough good shots last season. Jovic deals with that. Um, I still think midfield is a massive issue because mm. like in the back line, it's good they've added talent, but they had plenty of talent there. Like, mm. like talent wasn't really an issue. Um, I still do worry about that midfield and I find it hard. When I look at that midfield at the moment and I imagine them playing against Barcelona, in my mind, it's hard not to see a picture of yeah. like Frankie Dion just running through the midfield. Like I just don't, I don't see, Casemiro has had to do a lot for a long time and Casemiro is still a useful player and will be a useful player for years to come, but he's 27. Like it's not like he's 22. Mm. So like change is coming in that midfield, whether you like it or not. And I think you need to deal with it. Like Fabian Ruiz would be great. Fabian Ruiz is great, but he's much more attacking than Ceballos. Like he's going to be a guy who is trying to create shots, whereas Ceballos was doing a huge amount of defensive work when he was at Betis. Like that to me is what you need. Like they need a two-way midfielder, which actually, when you look at them, like if they don't play Kovacic, they basically don't have a two-way midfielder and they haven't had for a while. Mm. Like they, they've really compartmentalized their midfield into like Casemiro who does all the defending and these other guys who do the passing and running. And Modric can't really do the running anymore and Kroos is a great passer, but Never I'm not sure if he's him. any longer a good enough passer to make up for his defensive deficiencies because I think the game is getting more and more taxing for midfielders. So I don't know, maybe it will help that they have a slightly they have a slightly more um, more defensively minded left back, you know, Falon Mendy, who has really good defensive output and is incredibly fast. Maybe that will help. Um, but I don't know, like to me, it just seems like that is the area they need to solve. It's, I mean, uh, it's, it's weird that they continue to be linked with Christian Eriksen and Paul Pogba as well, because Paul Pogba could be that two-way midfielder, but then you lose kind of the essence or what everyone wants to see from Paul Pogba, which is at the tip of the diamond contributing in the final third, isn't it? Rather than kind of being this guy who starts play. I don't uh, know. From, I, from deep in midfield. I, is I that would, true? I would much prefer to see him further up the pitch, Paul Pogba f affecting the game from uh, in the opposition half than and being this player that, that starts moves just because of how good his distribution is. Yeah, but when they absolutely. But, when, but then if that's what they wanted when they bought him, then they should never have bought him. Like Because I think the thing about Pogba, Pogba wasn't that guy when they bought him. Like Pogba had one really big attacking season and the season before they bought him, he had a really big defensive season. Like To me, the advantage of Pogba is that Pogba can do a bunch of different things depending what you need him to do. And I think like to kind of say, oh, let's turn him into attacking midfielder, it's kind of like, well, if you want an attacking midfielder, you already have Isco and James. And like James, to be honest, was one of the best creators in Europe last last season. Like, I, it's it's absurd it, to me yeah. that they can't that James cannot find a home like right now in a really top side. But I suppose if if, if Napoli potentially want him, which it looks like is going to happen, then trying to get Fabian Ruiz lot, in return would be yeah, smart. A lot of top clubs kind of skeptical about his. His fitness at this point, and he finished four nineties, mm. didn't he, for for Bayern Munich last campaign? Big defensive um, output, I, though. Again, I, I, I agree. So I, I would have, I would have characteristics. I've said this, yeah, 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 a couple of times. So Spurs going in for Rodriguez. Well, I think if you if you bought Pogba in as a Real Madrid in a four three three at Real Madrid and just had him in in there instead of, I mean, that'd be great. It'd be a massive kind of a, a upgrade on on Modric at the moment, wouldn't it? But I. Instead of instead of pursuing Christian Eriksen or pursuing uh, Pogba, I think he's going to be priced out of a move. I don't think they move for Pogba and Hazard in the same summer, do they? I think that's just obscene. Uh, despite Marcus saying they've got five hundred million mm. pounds to spend, I mean they've already burnt through three hundred of that. Uh, that. I mean, Deli Ali would be absolutely phenomenal. I think for for Real Madrid as well. Yeah, um, be well, that's that really not be. on the cards. This one, though, that would be a perfect player for them. Though. No, mm. but, but um, he's he's kind of that two-way midfielder, isn't he? And he can contribute a lot more defensively than kind of people give him credit. Hundred percent. Uh, I feel like they're just going to misuse Hazard. 
that's one of the main issues. Like, I feel like if their aim for Hazard is that he becomes like a final third player, like they are misusing Hazard a little yeah. bit. I, if their aim is that, like, if they play him alongside Jovic, I think it's great. If they play him alongside Benzema, I think they're stupid. Like, because Benzema's role generally, like, had a good goal scoring season last year, but lots of penalties. But his his role generally has been to facilitate another forward, another goal scorer, and that's when he's at his best. Hazard is not that guy. Hazard, Hazard will maybe score more goals in this Real Madrid side, maybe, though he's probably not going to take penalties, so that will drop him down substantially. Mm. But um, he, if your aim for Eden Hazard is you're just getting on the end of passes in the final third, it's like everything that's great about Eden Hazard is taken out of that because he's not a great goal scorer. He's a good goal scorer. He's an amazing progressor. Dribbler, he's an amazing crazy, yeah. creator. So I think like play him alongside Jovic, and then figure out the other position, one of Vinicius, Asensio, it's, Raheem yeah. Diaz, whoever it is. I just think you've got to sort of applaud their work. I mean, it just couldn't almost have gone better for them this month. They picked mm. the best emerging striker in the world, bar Mbappe probably, on the basis of last season. Sure. They picked the only superstar that was realistically available in Eden Hazard, I think. And they've got one of the best up and coming left backs who should secure that Frank, that flank, sorry, not Frank, uh, for years to come. Mm. And if they add a whoever, Ndombele, Pogba, Eriksen, all three who I think are a step up on the future, the next two, three years of Cruz and Modric, if you get what I mean, as in they might not instantly be better than Cruz and Modric, but they will be in two years' time by a distance. There's more gas in the tank. Exactly. Yeah. Um, then I, th I think this, this window could be one of the ones we talk about in five years' time as that's when Real Madrid finally got rid of that incredible crop of talent that they had, um, but who were basically ageing out all at the same time through a lack of consistent what, spending. What they're doing is making up for past errors, right, in, in, in the best possible way. They were too way. slow so to adapt. They've kind of mismanaged their, their transfer policy over the last two or three seasons and accumulated a bunch of talent which they've not been able to turn into, you know, significant players of significant output. Um, I would maybe also thinking about kind of two two-way midfielders, just put age to one side and just see how much Napoli want for Alan still. Maybe while you're while you're trying to find <laughs> that player over the next couple of years, he would give you outstanding output. I think he's 28 now, maybe. He's barely older than Eriksen. Mm. Yeah, I mean. so I, and I don't think you're going to have to pay 120 for him, most certainly, which you would for Christian Eriksen. Um, massive defensive output, great at progressing the ball again. Um, also, I'm Rabiot. Yeah, I still think. <laughs> I, I still think. Diago having Alcantara. complimented their signings, I still don't think this makes them title winners. Guaranteed though, because I still think they've got a pretty average keeper when it comes to a top team in Courtois. Probably the lowest of the top standard, if that mm. makes sense. And then their defence has been shaky for the last five or six years, really, and it's been covered up by a super superhuman attack. Um, and I think Ramos isn't getting any younger. Varane had a really shaky year. And Marcelo, when he played last year, was a liability defensively. I mean, adding um, elite talent will help there. But, Zidane, but you're right in that Zidane has never shown an ability to coach a good defence at all. His defensive theory was always kind of like, we we drop off, like we're quite conservative. And then at a certain point, Sergio Ramos goes and gets the ball. And yeah. that was always the theory. It was like, wait till they get 30 yards from goal and Ramos gets the ball. Exactly. Exactly. If we had to predict... Where will we be in a year's time in terms of La Liga? Who will be the dominant force? And it's difficult to say now, but the fans will love this. Mm. The dominant force. Who wins La Liga it's, next year, for you next year, Chris? Given, given the talent that both clubs, Barcelona and Real Madrid, have acquired in the last 18 months, like it, they should unquestionably the be, be, oh my God, the top dogs, shouldn't they? But I, I'm not convinced um, that kind of either manager is going to necessarily, you know, ascertain every last drop out, out of said talent. Um, be interesting to see what moves Atletico Madrid make, but their overhaul was bigger than the other two clubs, isn't it? Um, Valverde or oh, Zidane? <laughs> you have to say one. Uh, I'm, I'm probably still go with Barcelona, but I think it's going to be significantly closer. Um, yeah, Fair. God, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. What do you think, Pat? Barca. Barca. Yeah, I, start, I sort of agree. I think they've got. If you match up Vinicius versus Dembele, you go Dembele. If you match up Suarez versus Benzema, you go Suarez. Their, their attack is still so much better and they look like they're going to add Griezmann to that as well, even though that seems to be delayed. Um, and they're adding Frankie de Jong to that midfield. They were such a better side last year than Real Madrid. I think it's, these signings don't change it. It'll make it a lot closer. So I'm going to go Barcelona too. But what do you guys think? Why don't you vote in the poll? Who will win La Liga next year, Real Madrid or Barcelona? Let's move on to quick fire questions. 
First quick fire question comes in from regular contributor Ashley Toomey. Thanks very much, Ashley. Uh, is Carrasco coming to Europe? Uh, they ask. Uh, Pat, as the Arsenal resident, what do you think? Is he coming? Uh, Would you want him? Yeah, I'd be perfectly happy with him. Like for the price, uh, it sounds extremely reasonable. Um, it sounds like it'd be about 25 million euros, which for a player of his quality, at his age, he'll be 26 in September. So there's still a lot of time for him. Very quick, pretty good creator, good goal scorer as well. Like I. Uh, I'd be absolutely fine with this. Like, if you're on a budget and you need a winger, like, this is a pretty sensible move. And it sounds like there's some sort of understanding with Dalian Liafang that he'll be able to come back to Europe this year. So, if not to Arsenal, I know Milan are looking for a winger. So, somebody like that, I'm sure, will take a gamble on him. But at the moment, it sounds like a deal is almost done and everybody reputable seems to think that deal is with Arsenal. So, we'll nice. See. Makes sense. I don't think we need to add any more on that. Let's ask. Uh, Josh Davis's question, are Bayern making a mistake by waiting until next season to sign Timo Werner? What do you think about this, Chris? Should they have got Werner this summer? Or maybe they still will? Uh, maybe they put it off at the risk of upsetting Lewandowski, who of course got, what, 27 goals? Oh, I right, say? Uh, 22 yeah. goals. Tw oh, was, was it, it tw more? 22, oh, okay. 22 goals, 7 assists, I think. Yeah, okay, was. So, okay. 22, so 29 goal contributions in the league. So he's, he's still a striker who can win you the league. I mean, his XG as well was 33. Like expect him to score 33 goals and get 10 assists. Yeah. In a 34-game so, league. Uh, First time he's really underperformed this yeah. year. Still a meteoric still amazing, output right? from him. Um, for the neutral, extremely exciting to see what Nagelsmann does with a player like uh, like Timo Werner. Um, I think Timo Werner remaining at RB Leipzig makes maintains them as an outside mm. shot for the league, especially with someone of, of Nagelsmann's talent. Nagelsmann's talent uh, and given what he got out of the Hoffenheim attack last season which was the second best attack in the league inexplicably despite parting ways with their prominent attackers uh, the summer before um, yeah I'm I'm really excited to see what he can do with Paulson uh, and Werner uh, so so great for everyone involved great great for German football the competitiveness of German football 100% Pat do you see Werner on the move this summer does it also open the door for someone like Liverpool who have been linked with in the past to maybe try and snap him up um Sure, though I think Liverpool probably go for somebody who is a bit more versatile. Like I know everyone always says Werner can play off the left, but he doesn't really. He's mm. a centre forward. Um, I don't know. I think like, if he wants to go to Bayern and Bayern have kind of expressed an interest, then he'll happily sit around for a year and go to Bayern. Like I don't think it's a big deal. Like so, I don't think it's a mistake for them to wait a year. If I were them, I wouldn't. But um, yeah, it's not particularly an issue. Like I understand if they want to keep their powder dry, so that this summer they can go for a lights out winger. No. Which would make sense. I would like to see Werner at Barcelona, to be perfectly frank. I think I'd, I'd like them to be a little bit more creative with their signings. Um, we well, keep, keep on seeing them linked with Rashford. Just, just so. as, a, as a Luis Suarez replacement. He's going to cost less than Rashford, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, we actually, I, I think, think he's a step up on Rashford by quite a distance oh. as well. As a goal scorer currently, mm. but I think Rashford. Timo Werner, I don't know, I'm intrigued to see how Timo Werner fits into a side that has like 60% possession and is in the final third a lot. We don't actually see that. Like, it's what, point. In regards to link up play, it's just not. It's just not maybe, his game. Maybe on his national, you know. On yeah, but even even at national level, like he he's been okay at points. But we've also seen at times Germany struggle with him, like as a as a front man in a side where you kind of end up with about six people in the final third interchanges. Still not regularly starting, so I didn't start in that eight sure. thrashing of Estonia where Marco Royce had an absolute field day. Um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, Wisniewski98 says, potential worst buy of the summer. Ooh. What's your shout, Dukes? Come on. Um, I think we might have done this on Sunday Vibes, mate. So you oh, really? You, you okay, well, I actually think this is a bit harsh because I don't think he's a bad player, but for what they're expecting, I think uh, Pulisic is uh, going to be a bit of a disappointment to most Chelsea fans. I think they're in for a shocking year as it is. Not, not a shocking year, a big downturn. And if they're <laughs> expecting Pulisic to get anywhere close to above 10 goal contributions, I think you're badly mistaken at this stage. Yeah. Potential to be in the future a world star, but at the moment he's not quite there. Sarri and Hazard depart in the same summer is a f***ing nightmare. I know, I know. I just, I, it sort of baffles me. I think uh, so many self-entitled Chelsea fans just think they're going to be absolutely fine, but uh, you're really not. I think uh, you'll really regret treating him with such disdain over the last 12 months, is my opinion. Have you guys already, you guys already covered this on Sunday yeah, Vibes? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, let's go on to the last one, which is uh, an amusing one. M Kendall 12 has said, thoughts on League One's new sponsorship deal to be re renamed League One Uber Eats for 2021, 21, 22. What a joke this is. The Why? league is being sponsored by Uber Eats. Why? It, it'd be like the Premier League, you know, Deliveroo. 
Or so Deliveroo Premier League. Deliveroo yeah, I mean, Premier League. It what? used to be sponsored by Carling, which isn't even a beer that anyone in this country likes and is not sold outside this country because it Car sucks. Was it the Carling Premier League? No. Uh, the Car Carling Cup. The Carling Cup. Yeah, yeah the Carling Cup. Had, no, we but then you also had the like, Premier League. You had the, we? We had, you had before. That's actually a good point. I hadn't really thought of that, but I think those, those firms maybe have a bit more it's the word prestige. eats. It's the word eats in it. It's not a brand name. It's an actual... There's an actual English word, you yeah. know, sandwiched in between a brand and the league, which is a little bit like disconcerting. But I'm, I'm sh like, league in and, and any league, you know, that's not the Premier League or even the league, needs to do whatever they can to sort of r remain competitive. <laughs> you know, talking uh, about sponsorships. Uh, so yeah, fair play to them. Fair, Pat. Any strong opinions? No. Just You're fine with the league, <laughs> league one Uber Eats. Well, I don't see why it's worse than than the league of Santander or, or the Barclays Premier League. Like, I don't see what the difference is. All American there. sports, <laughs> and they've just got like they're just NASCAR, just like plastered in them, aren't they? It's, it's, it's I think it's the start of the decline, really. Uh, I think it's, it's very much up sports what, direct on into Carina, what? into, into what, Mike think? Ashley taking over Liga. It's going to be JD Sports League on before we know it. Uh, very disappointed with that, but yeah, I'm the only one. M Kendall twelve, the other two all for it. Um, let's wrap up Content Club then for another week. Chris, what should the good people go do now? Okay, so we have Stat Wars, the league, yes. Stat Wars, the champions has been, you know, and gone. And Patrick reigned victorious, so congratulations to him. Go and watch the final if you haven't. Uh, I mean, why would you have just ruined the result? Mm -hmm. uh, new squad goals is out on FDFC as is new awkward FIFA, so go and check those out as well. Nice. Pat, anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, check out the Games Gone Mad, Olivia Dodds podcast, and obviously download Sunday Vibes Extra Time, which will be out this Sunday for the second week running, amazing. Great, and there's gonna be one next week as well, so tune in for that. Thanks very much for watching, guys. See you later.